it's been one year since I bought the property and this was entirely wooded. You can see all those pine trees right there. That's what all of this looked like right where I'm standing. It's early April here in Tennessee and I have my three swales in my first three swales. I got my mini orchard planted. I have a whole bunch of flowers planted. I have some garden beds going right now and I'm waiting to plant all the rest of the seeds until the last frost is in. My name is David A. Stone and welcome to another exciting episode of Develop Awesome Skills where I'm committed to helping you maximize your life with a food forest so you can live happy, healthy, and free. So stay to the end of this video because I'm going to be giving you my April update for this mini food forest, uh, Stonehaven, Tennessee. This is the food forest glamp ground actually. You can see my first house I just built. It's been one year since I bought the property and this was entirely wooded. You can see all those pine trees right there. That's what all of this looked like right where I'm standing. This was all fully wooded. I had to take down all these trees to give myself some pocket areas, a nice circle driveway that wraps around this, the first three swales here. Um, I also have a, a natural spring that goes on that side of the hill and a natural spring that goes on this side of the hill. So there's a lot that can be done with this property. Um, I had the initial road cut in as I showed you some of the footage on that from the, from the street all the way up to basically almost the top of the hill back there. However, it's gonna be another like 20 grand just to get that road done. So for now, I'm doing what I can. Uh, this might take a little bit longer to get you guys here. However, I am getting rid of the pigs and they cleared out a whole area back over there, over that um, creek, looking over that spring area. So that's a perfect place now. And I'll show you that area right now um, after this, during this video, so you guys can see where I think I can, I'm gonna put the first unit. So when you guys come and stay, it could be a tent, could be a little unit, probably start with a tent, but I'm gonna get that area nice and landscaped and um, and then you guys can start coming over. But instead of getting the first 20 in up front, it's probably just gonna be the first one uh, as I get this going. So you guys can come actually, some people can come stay, but it's not gonna be the full glamp ground's not gonna be ready. It's probably gonna take me a whole nother year to get it ready for you guys to really come and stay like a lot only because there's a lot to be done and right now it's just me. So uh, certain things are on priority hold, but the seasons don't wait for anybody. And that's why I wanted to get these trees in the ground now and they're already starting to bloom. So these are bare root trees. And when I like, I like to start an orchard with bare root trees because then you know, first off, these trees are very young. They get to really find their root system in the current surroundings. And I'll tell you how I'm digging them too. So, um, so anyways, quickly, before I show you the trees, let me show you, tell you how I dig them. Now, there's something very cool called programming seeds, which I just realized, I just started learning about. Programming seeds is when you actually start them in very bad soil up front feed them very little water for the first two months, allow them to, 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 to basically sprout and grow and kind of languish for the first two months because there are some genes switches inside of seeds that only get turned on at germination. So some guy just started weed eating over there, so sorry about that. But at germination, there is um, some switches that get flipped on inside the seed. That, that, that first root, that com the germination root that goes down is actually more of a sensor. It comes down and it senses the environment. And it says, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Like guys, I'm, he's communicating back to the seed. He says, seed, you need to switch on drought resistance because there's no water here. You also need to s uh, switch on the, the trait of you can live without a lot of nutrients because there's not a lot of nutrients here. You need to switch on all these things for harsh conditions. And all of these harsh condition switches get flipped on right at germination. But after germination, those switches can never get adjusted ever again. So if you give it a lot of great soil and that germination root goes down and it says, oh, hey guys, uh, don't worry about flipping on any hardcore switches because we're good. We got plenty of nutrients. We have plenty of water, plenty of everything. We're good to go. So just flip on the switches and start uh, the normal switches. But don't really flip on those extra supercharged switches because we don't really need them. This, this is really great stuff right here. Sometimes when you buy a tree from a nursery, they're putting a whole bunch of, and, and the tree's kind of a couple years old. It's got some flowers on it. And you're excited about that tree. Well, they've been feeding that soil for a, a, 
Oh, the whole life of that tree in that little pot, they've been using chemical fertilizers and a whole bunch of other stuff to really just pump those roots full of nutrients. So we're basically programming that tree backwards. When we bring it into our yard, we put it into a hole that we really haven't prepared. It has less, worse soil around it than is in that pot, especially if we don't feed that tree. That's really a lot of times why, why those kind of trees will die. We're programming them in the wrong direction. But my theory is, if you can get bare root trees, the bare root trees, there's a tree behind me here. There's Pierre. Uh, there's a tree behind me here. Hi, sweetheart, how you doing? Um, and the tree, let me just show you. So right here, it's a bare root tree. And I'm gonna show you what they look like uh, here in a second. But when you get the bare roots, those roots have actually been grafted onto a rootstock that is hardy for this area. And so the rootstock is a hardy rootstock. And then they graft different varieties of, of peaches and cherries and all the fruits on top of those hardy rootstocks. So these are already hardy rootstocks when you get them bare root. They don't come with soil. They just come with bare roots exposed. So you got to put them in the ground. So whatever you're going to put them in. So I like to dig small holes that just fit the roots, you know, pretty deep. Make sure they drain. Make sure these holes drain, but I like to dig small holes. This is Pierre. How you doing, baby? Um, and make sure that those holes drain really well. You don't want the holes to be clay and hold water like a pot. Hit that bottom of that hole really good and make sure it drains. But anyways, don't dig them too big, basically. And then allow those roots to kind of feel the clay or feel the actual dirt, the normal dirt around it. So really, and it's actually better even if you mix some natural dirt with your soil mix when you mix it and fill it in the hole. Now mine's clay, it gets pretty clumpy. So I, I didn't do that for all of my holes, but what I did was I dug, dug a small hole so it can feel, and I dug the, a, a, a squared off hole. You also want to dig a squared off hole because, it, or at least a hole with jagged edges. So if that root starts to curl around, it doesn't actually curl around like it's in a pot. Sometimes roots can actually bind themselves up in a round hole in clay. So if you have some edges, that root will hit an edge and it will realize it has to push through. So just a couple quick dips for planting these fruit trees. But I like the bare roots because I think that the bare roots might actually benefit from a little bit of programming. So if they're super young and you put them in a hole, the only nutrients I've given them so far is mycorrhiza and rock dust. I mix that in with the um, with the soil mixture. And when I planted it with that, at least the mycorrhiza will connect underground everywhere and it will create the internet underneath orchard. And all these trees can communicate with each other and it'll go out miles too. So if there's some nutrients that these trees need that is not in this vicinity, the mycorrhiza, the tree will tell the mycorrhiza that what it needs and the mycorrhiza is gonna go get it for them and bring it back to this tree, which is super crazy if there's a specific nutrient this tree needs, as long as you have a big network of mycorrhiza underneath your orchard. So really it's meant for seeds. So the cool thing is we can test the programming of seeds once these trees produce. When these trees produce a, a specific variety of fruit, I can take that seed and I can program it, grow it in some really volatile soil for the first two months, and then we can plant it in some really good soil and feed it. And supposedly over five years, you can test these between a programmed and a non-programmed seed, and they will do really, really well being programmed. So that this first half of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, basically make it into a half segment because there's a 10 minute uh, limit on TikTok. The second part, I'm gonna walk you around the yard and we're gonna get to see the orchard. Right now the circle driveway goes around this way and back down that way. So these are my first three swales. The top swale, the second swale, and this is the third swale I have right there, and there's the well. Um, so I'm not planting anything right, right next to the well shaft. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna be, and you can actually see contouring here. Can you see that? So it kind of comes down as the, on the hill and then it swales up and the trees are planted on the back side of the swale here. So on the actual swale, I can plant vegetables. All, I'm gonna put some of these bags of soil on top of the swale and then we can cut in there and I can flatten that out. 
Uh, the water will not come up over top of that. I mean, that's why these drain areas are in the side here. But I gotta, I gotta kind of make sure that this is, there needs to be a little, you can actually see it here on the video, there's a little bump right there. It needs to be smoothed out a little bit more. You want them to be dead level. So they just fill up when it rains. And then if they fill up to the overflow point, they'll overflow. But they just fill up and they sink back in. And the water just really permeates this area. Now, this area already has a lot of water under it because that well is, uh, water is at 46 feet deep. So, I mean, there's a lot of water in this. Uh, in, the water's at 46 feet deep. The well's 250 feet, but the water's at 46 feet. So, there's a lot of water in these hills, but I'm going to be increasing the amount of water, especially when I chip that. You won't even be able to tell there's a swale there. Um, but check this out. So I've been planting not only this one, this is a contender peach, but check this out. It's just popping. It's a beautiful little tree. Um, I've been pruning as I go. I'm letting these lower branches grow because I actually want these trees to stay kind of smaller size wise. Um, look at these day lilies coming in at the bottom. And this is a, uh, Stella cherry tree. It's just popping just popping and you can see the graft down here this is where they grafted it to the other to the root stock but once i you know get some seeds from the stella cherry i can try to uh plant programmed seeds and see if i can get a hardy root stock out of an actual specific seed these little irises are coming in down here and take them a while red haven peach popping doing really well This is a May Gold Peach. Totally doing amazing. What is this here? So I staggered Peach Cherry, Peach Cherry. This is a Rainier Cherry here. And look at all these blooms. So beautiful. So I'm gonna let this flower, but these flowers I will not let set into fruit. I'm gonna let them flower so they can get pollinated and the pollinators can have some stuff to eat and they look beautiful. But once the flowers die, I'm not going to let any fruit set on these trees. Obviously, they're way too small. Probably for two years. Um, maybe the third year. Oh, you know, I also planted some peas or some beans down in the bottom here. So they can give some nitrogen to these trees. This one has not really... This is called a Loring peach. And the cool thing is I got all these different varieties so they will fruit at different times of the year. So I want to have a, a six month window where I can eat peaches, not just one month. Same with cherries. I want to eat cherries all year. There's a little spider made his web in there. Got some flowers. That's why he made his web in there because there's bugs coming to the flowers. His web is full too. But look at this day lily underneath here. It's beautiful. I love how geometric they are. And then some more peas coming in. Another day lilies popping out right here. Got a Hale Haven peach, probably a later in the season. It's just starting to pop. Another beautiful day lily, a blue damson plum. You can see on the bare root, it's sprouting right above the graft. You don't want any of these sprouts to happen below the graft. You always want to make sure that any sprouts happening are above the graft. See what we got here. This is another plum, Al Rosa plum. Got some new sprouts going down here above the graft. And this is a giant Fuyu persimmon. Excited about this one. Has not start. Well, yeah, actually, these little buds are starting to turn uh, green now, which is nice. And this one I'm excited about too is a chocolate persimmon. And uh, we're gonna see about this one. It's not sprouted yet. You know, I planted these real close together too. I did stagger, but this is gonna be a very dense food forest. But look at this tree. This is a Bing cherry, one of my favorite cherries. Pretty cool. Another beautiful day lily. A couple more popping out of the ground. Look at this little stick, very bare root. Hail Haven Peach, another one of those. Um, another day lily. 
Look at this beautiful day lily here. It's a big one. And another cherry tree with some blossoms starting. A Lappin's cherry. Looks like a later season because it's just barely starting to pop. Loring peach. It's just starting to pop. And look at this one. This was the first day lily to come up. Look at this one. It's got like four things inside. So I wonder what this is going to look like. And these are some garden beds. I planted frost tolerant stuff here for now. It, there's barely a few things popping up. The peas are coming in first. A few other things are coming up. I planted out this whole bed with frost tolerant stuff. And there's a lot of little sprouts coming in. Like I said, I did not um, mark what I planted. So we're gonna see what, and I planted them very densely. But there's some nice rows coming in there. A few rows of sprouts coming in. This whole peach is doing great here with these beautiful daylilies too. Look at them. And this one back here. But look at these guys. Just think that geometry is just incredible. And up here's my little flower bed, the first little flower bed. We got some high incense some uh, daffodils and some tulips. They're basically all pretty much done blooming for the year, I think. This is another peach. This is an Alberta peach. Doing so well. Got an iris coming up in the base here. Another iris coming up here. And this is a, a dwarf North Star cherry. peach. This is another contender peach. It's just starting to kick in. We got another beautiful couple day lilies down here and some bees. <laughs> and then throughout these flowers, you can see these little green sprouts. I planted um, red clover in between all these flowers. So that'll start coming up. I got some, I got a grapevine, raspberry and a blackberry. Um, same here over on this side. We'll see if they come up. And then this is a rose bush. Got a rose bush on each, each side of this little entryway. My last two trees up here that I have planted, uh, another red haven peach doing real well, a blueberry, uh, uh, this is a wild blackberry. And then the last one here is the Bell of Georgia peach, doing real well too, with another blueberry planted down here. So this is the little initial garden. The water pools up here, overflows, goes down there. The other swale is right in the middle. And then the last swell right now is down there. I've been cleaning out that pocket at the bottom and I'm planning on where the road's gonna go. So uh, it's gonna change a little bit because there's a big pile of wood chips here, but I think the road will go right there. I gotta take out these pine trees when all the pigs are gone. Basically gonna clear out that section and that's gonna be where the unit, the first unit goes, I think. Hey everybody, how's it going? Mm. Mm. Oh, hi mama, how's it going? Hi Milo, how you doing? You're a good boy, you're a good girl mama. She is huge, she's probably 160, 170 pounds right now. He's pretty small. Pudding Tane's getting pretty big too. But Pudding Tane's real, real young still. I mean, she's easy 110 pounds maybe, but that's like small for what she's she could get. She could get 400 pounds. Now, Miss Hamilton's pretty big. She's 
close to max her size for herself. But, but these pigs have done their job. It's been really great having them, but I'm gonna end up getting rid of all these pigs. There's only five left. I got rid of 10 to a couple people yesterday. So that was good. I'm clearing out this whole area back behind my house, clearing out that whole spring area so it's nice and clean and it'll have like nice little hills, little little places that we could, I'm gonna grow wildflowers down that whole thing with some pathways throughout. Now right here where I had the full big pig pen, that's where the, strip, the creek is right, or the spring is back there. So once I clear all that out, I could put a unit like right here, have a nice lawn and have a nice food forest over here. Maybe, you know, even a water feature or whatever, but I could have a little unit that looks out that way. And what is it, everybody? They had an eventful day yesterday because they're trying to round up all the other pigs. They got, they were just running, running, running all day. But I closed off this area now so I can start clearing this out. They piled up all the rocks for me, as you can see. I just gotta go take those out of there. I can make little borders with them. But it's really pretty out here, especially if I carpet that natural spring with uh, wildflowers all the way down past my house. So there it is. What do you guys think? very happy about this place. I really do love this place and I'm thankful for it. There's a lot to do. A lot. I like that there's a lot to do. There's some delicious bone broth here. Just all the bones with the meat uh, coming off of the bones. Some of them have a little more of the, the bone, uh, bone broth lard on the top. There is a little bit of actual other lard in here too because the bones had some fat on them. Um, but then check out this beautiful leaf lard. Just pure white. It's beautiful. This is the this is the stuff they make croissants out of. It's the, the lard on the inside of the cavity that's around the kidneys and it surrounds the organs. It's just such a very different kind of fat than all the other kinds of fat on the pig. And then here I actually ended up getting some bone broth underneath the fat when I poured it somehow. But it's kind of fun just making a lot of products. I'm making it all on the grill. There's my outdoor station where I uh, bring all my supplies. It's really nice. That's where I process for now. A lot more work to do on the house as well but hey it's been one year i'm looking around i'm like i literally bought this property fully wooded one year ago so i'm thankful i had a, i've done a lot um i got i got a house built i got somewhere to sleep i mean i was sleeping in a tent right there for the first six months while i was building that house you know and why am i doing this guys i'm doing this because I saw this meme and I'm feeling the pain too, but I saw this meme that basically said like, the bank says I can only afford $1,200 a month. So it's like, you don't make enough money to pay $1,200 for a mortgage, but you do make enough money to pay $2,500 a month in rent. And honestly, that is ridiculous. The, the costs of everything right now is crazy. And so also the other thing, if you guys wanna hear about how I bought this property, because I bought it without any banks, with, with very little down. $500 down, $400 a month. Seller financed, no banks, no credit check, nothing. And I own this property, but I didn't have to go through, go through banks. And my, my, my payment is only $400 a month. So, you know, this is more reasonable to me. I'm building something here. And uh, in the meantime, I don't have to like, stress myself out with $2,500 a month payments for a one bedroom apartment in the city. That doesn't work for me. This is recharging my soul. That's the video for today, guys. You guys are amazing. I can't wait. I'm trying to get this video, this, this place done so you guys can come visit here. 
I'm gonna have a whole calisthenics gym too. That's it guys, you guys are amazing. Till next time, my name is David A. Stone. Develop awesome skills and go find your gold. gold.